Hello and welcome to the lecture on Lakdas Vikramasinha's poem from the life of the folk poet E. Senior. We are going to first start this lecture with an introduction to the poem and then I will go on to explain a few significant terms and Lakdas Vikramasinha's use of the local variety of English. And then finally, I will go into an in-depth analysis of this poem. Let's first start with a reading of this poem. From the life of the folk poet E. Sinyo. E. Sinyo had the bamboo near Hanikatta, and from those waters made his hut, and had nothing to cover it with, nothing like a hundred and sixty bales of straw. So he made his way to the Valava at Idamalgoda, and to the Maniki said how poor he was and how from his twenties he had made those lines of soul, swearing before her all her spealties. So she said, wait for the yellow halves and take the straw. Isinya said, oh, the rains are coming near. My woman fretting, her kid will get all wet. Then the kind maniki said, oh, then you take what straw you need from the behind shed. And Isinya being a folk poet and his lines being not all dead, the benison of the maniki of Inda Malgoda lives even today. Let's now go on to the next slide. I think we should first start with identifying the form of this poem. We see that this is a poem which takes the form of both a folk poem as well as a narrative poem because it actually depicts indications of both because folk poetry is a part of a society's folklore and oral tradition, while narrative poetry means a form of poetry that is used to tell stories. Also, we can see that this is a poem which is based on the Sri Lankan rural context, and the characters are evidently identified as representing the feudal social formation of the rural context of Sri Lanka. This is also a poem which is in verse style because it captures the dramatized conversation between E. Sinyo and the Maniki of the Valawa. Here the word Maniki refers to the wife of a Sinhalese nobleman, nobleman who owns a Valawa at Iddamalgoda. And the word Valawa means a mansion in Sinhala. So what seems to be interesting in this poem is that if you merely engage in a surface reading of it, we can say that the poem seems to be representing the hierarchical re relationship or the power dynamics between the Manike and E. Sinyo in a positive manner. This is because the Manike seems to be a very benevolent and generous mistress as she understands the troubles, difficulties and challenges of E. Sinyo. However, interestingly, the deceptive simplicity of this poem is that it is not really a sympathetic understanding of the portrayal of attitudes. It is actually this kind of reading that we will engage in our in-depth analysis of the poem. So the poem starts off with saying, E Sinyo cut the bamboo near Hanikatta. So if you look at the word uh, E Sinyo, the name E Sinyo, we first have to talk about the origin of the name E. Sinyo. So E. Sinyo is a name derived from Portuguese and later became the name of a common Sinhalese man. And Hanikatta is a name of a thicket, that means a dense group of trees or bushes. And then the next line says, and from the wattles he made his hut. So wattles are bamboo strips as material for making the walls of E. Sinyo's hut. And then it says, and had nothing to cover it with. But the, uh, the difficulty is that E. Sinyo actually doesn't have anything to cover it with. And he needs straws, as in a hundred bales of straw. Though, so we can understand that this gives an idea about the poor economic condition of E. Sinyo. So what does E. Sinyo do? E. Sinyo makes his way to the Balawa at Iddamalgoda, and then he hopes to go to the Manike, hoping to find a solution for his struggles and difficulties. And then he tells the Manike how poor he was. So the use of the word Manike is important because it can refer to the indigenousness in terms of incorporating local forms of address and single nouns such as Manike instead of English mistress. And then he continues on to say how from his twenties he made the lines of soul swearing before her all, her all his fealties. 
So we see that he reminds her of the time he made a song for her, swearing all his fealties for her. So the use of the fealties is important here because fealties, according to the dictionary definition, means fidelity or the faithfulness of a vassal or feudal tenant to his lord. So in this case, we can say that it means it means that the folk poet Isinio composed a song to the maniki of Indaman Goda, swearing his loyalties and faithfulness to her. And also, I want you to keep this word fealties in mind because we will be revisiting uh, this term later on in the lecture. And then we can go back to the poem here. It says, so she said, wait for the yala. So what is the word yala? Yala actually refers to one of the monsoons which control the cultivation season of Sri Lanka. And the other season is maha. So yala is a season which actually lasts from May until the end of August. And we can also say that Yala also indicates the indigenousness of incorporating Sinhala terms or Sinhala adjectives instead of English ones. And then the poem says, so she said, wait for the Yala harvest and take the straw. Easy you said, all oh, the rains are coming near. So here we can understand that Easing is actually in a desperate situation where his need and urgency for straw are immediate and urgent because he has to pro provide for the protection as well as livelihood of his family, that is of his wife and his child. And then he says, he explains his difficulties further by saying, my woman fretting, her kid will get all wet. And then what does the maniki respond with? It says, then the kind maniki said, or oh, then you take what straw you need from the behind shed. And he senior being a folk poet and his lines being not all dead. The benison of the maniki of Vidyamal Goda lives even today. So here the word benison in the poem means blessing. So let's go back to the next slide. So what we can understand here is that we can notice several things in terms of Vikramasinghe's use of the local variety of English. And this enables uh, Vikramasinghe to give an authentically unique Sri Lankan experience to his readers. So let's explain this further. Here we can notice the word, uh, the word pluralization of the word brains and the lack of the copula of the B word in terms of saying my woman fretting instead of saying my woman is fretting, fretting right? So we can evidently notice the lack of the copula. And then we can also see that the phrase the behind shed is used instead of saying the shed at the back. So this indicates a direct translation from Sinhala. So we can easily identify that these are all deliberate and intentional attempts made by Laktasa Vikrama Sinhala to incorporate Sinhala terms and syntactic patterns to English. So we can see to what extent Vikrama Sinhala's poetry reflects an authentically unique Sri Lankan sensibility through recreating an intrinsically distinctive Sri Lankan experience. Now let's go on to the next slide. So if you remember, I said that in this lecture, we will be revisiting the term fealties. So actually we will be revisiting the terms fealties as well as benison. Because what is important about these two terms, fealties and benison, is that they both have archaic connotations. They both have the Latin origins and European feudalistic connotations. So therefore we can say that by using such exaggerated terms to show the loyalty and faithfulness of E. Sinyo, as well as the blessings of the Manike, Laktas Vikramasinha is perhaps subtly trying to depict that this is indeed an unequal relationship and it is also a hierarchical relationship where there are clear differences in terms of power dynamics between the Manike and Isinyo. And we also see that throughout the entire poem, Isinyo has to plead, right? He has to implore and plead the Manike. And how does she respond to his uh, earnings and pleas? 
she actually responds in a very easy and by using a very relaxed authority and power, right? So all the tension and struggles and difficulties are actually with e signal, while the mannequin is simply offering straw with merely a few words of kindness. Therefore, we can interpret that by using these kind of exaggerated diction and language. Perhaps Vikramasena is trying to depict or showcase this unequal relationship is a kind of relationship which can potentially be exploited. And this is where we actually end our analysis of this poem. And this is a work of reference you can read in order to understand this poem further. So do comment if you have any questions and thank you very much for listening.